Hello everybody, Darren here, and welcome back to episode 76 in my second Let's Play series for Anno 1800. In the last episode, we became a billionaire, <laughs> and we began redevelopment of our Docklands on the Island of Swords. Today we're going to continue with our redesign of Swords, but this time we're going to be dealing with our investors and their so beautiful skyscrapers. So Let's begin. Alright ladies and gentlemen, it's good to be back in Anno 1800 and kicking things off straight away with a big fat time lapse right here at the beginning, building out our sort of downtown district, I suppose, coming off of the Docklands. It's going to be where our high rises are going to go. And as people know from other time lapses I do, especially the bigger ones, what I often do is experiment around for a little while, and that's actually kind of the reason that this episode is so delayed, I suppose. It's because I spend a lot of time kind of designing out a city layout and then I'm not happy with it, I redo it, I try to figure out how I can make it look nice. Anyway, I've cut all that out for the time lapse, all the experimentation, and instead now I'm sort of working from a reference image of one layout that I thought kind of worked, and now I'm basically rebuilding it for the time lapse to make it look kind of nice, and saves me having to make, I don't know, hundreds of gigabytes of footage basically of just like failed attempts. So, as you can see, we're kicking things off with a big canal that stretches straight through the city. It's coming in off of the Docklands and then kind of turning around at a sort of L curve. Uh, and then we have it coming up here, <clears throat> which is going to wrap around basically the Skyline Tower as the focal point for the town. Now, to make it look a little bit nicer, I thought it'd be cool to kind of break it up a bit. It sort of gave me an Ellis Island type vibe in a way, where it's like this is going to almost be completely surrounded with water and then uh, sort of an outcropping around it for a road and for also a place for people to sit, eat, maybe the pavilions and have some spotlights shining up on the on the uh, Skyline Tower as well. Now ultimately I had to make the tough decision of getting rid of my old uh, zoos, so a lot of uh, that's after shaving off something like 2000 attractiveness and a lot of what I'm going to be doing in this episode is building that attractiveness back up by testing out a few things. And then it comes the point of moving all the buildings. So I wanted to make sure I got all the buildings over in this time lapse. So there is a lot to move. And then I'll be later kind of deciding to downgrade them or upgrade them based on where they are in the city to make them look a bit nicer. And of course, another challenge is then you want to have as many department stores around the area as possible. Now, this is kind of interesting. It's a sort of a spoiler, I guess, in a way for the end of the episode or towards the end of the episode. I think the money <laughs> at the beginning here was like plus 365,000 per minute and I think by the end it's going to be like 200,000 so this is definitely less efficient than it was before but it's not totally done yet so bear that in mind but I wanted to mention that because one thing I did try to put in mind for efficiency this time as opposed to last time was the different department stores so now I want to kind of dot them around the city and make sure the products that they're making are the right products for investors and what I need to shave off in terms of consumption and save on the supply chain so Basically, it's a really tough balance, you know, ideally you'd want to just like spam all 15 department stores or shopping arcades around roughly the same area and make sure everyone's covered by these things. But on the other hand, it's, it would look really awful doing that. So I'm trying to break them up and place them around the city where it makes sense, but then also you don't want to break up your skyline too much. The thing is as well with the stores, they're obviously smaller buildings, they don't reach such heights as the skyscraper, so they can look a bit weird having these giant gaps or pockets within your skyline. We've got our members club down, of course, we still have to supply our investors with the things that they need and they want, so a members club is there. I decided to put a hotel down as well, I just thought it looked kind of nice uh, in this kind of area around by the members club. I feel like there would be hotels near enough to the Skyline Tower, as it is primarily a big residence building for investors. Uh, and we're going to need some extra cafes, bars and restaurants, so having some extra customers ready to go is good as well from the tourists and the hotels. This is one of the issues that I found with the bank. It's an irregular size compared to the Skyline Tower, so it just doesn't really line up that well. And of course, this area needs its own power supply then, because this used to be all workers. And now that it's going to be investors, and possibly even engineers, they all need power. So that's another thing we're going to be doing this episode, is solving getting power to reach further through the island. And that's why we need more attractiveness, because it's controlled by the palace. So I've sort of got the foundations down for the canal now, that's going to be how it is. And at this point I've kind of created all these gaps so we can create roads that cross between them. So a road can go across two canal tiles, 
but it can't go across three, and the canal is three wide, so I have to create this little divot in the middle and connect the road across it that way, and then every second gap or whatever that I'm creating, I'm putting down the pedestrian crossings for people to walk over. That's why the canal edges I've paved with the white tiling, and that just makes it look a little bit nicer for the people that are crossing over. Using some of the new city, um, what's it called? Fountains? The kind of modular fountains that come with the High Life DLC here around the hotel. It looks quite nice. Of course, we've got all our tourism ornaments. I mean, I'm interested to see what's going to happen with the Vibrant Cities pack. I haven't looked too much into it. I think this teaser screenshots, at least as of recording, have been to do with artisan households and different colors and things like that. I think they teased one of the engineers being different colors. Could be wrong. That's going to shake things up a... Uh, Fairly considerably as well, but I won't be redesigning cities based on it, but I'm sure I'll go over things and beautify them based on new ornaments and based on like different colors we can add to the city to make it look a little bit nicer. This area especially though is just high life buildings and it's going to be tall investor buildings and I don't... I find it hard to imagine that they're going to change, but maybe they will. That'll be a DLC for a DLC type thing. So in front of the Skyline Tower, I've got the Skyline, this little new Skyline Tower kind of mini monument. It's like an eagle wings on top of a globe. Looks really good at the front there. Got a musician band playing, two searchlights either side of them that are pointing up at the tower to light it up at night. And then pavilions either side for people to chill and hang out. Now I'm actually debating still whether or not to wrap the canal all the way around or to just leave it cut at the sides here. I've decided for now to leave it cut, but I might end up wrapping it all the way around. What you don't see in the time lapse is actually at the back of this skyline tower, I ended up putting down a bus stop, so I'd have to put that a bit further out. It might be just a bit, a bit tricky. <clears throat> now, generally, I'm pretty happy with the layout of this. I, I think um, I'll talk it through a little bit more in the episode, so I don't want to be redundant, but there's definitely more room for more houses. So I think what I'm going to be doing is looking to get even more investors in and uh, filling out the extremities, because there's definitely more on the right side than there is on the left. And I kind of wanted to go further, further up into the banks of the river, um, where we kind of have the artisans at the moment. The extra artisans, that is. And then once we do that, we can kind of finally see what we're going to need logistically in terms of getting everything we need to sustain all of that. It is going to be a bit more of a strain on the economy than what we've currently got. So that should give us some fun logistics gameplay to work out. We might end up having to make some room, and possibly even take out one of Arthur's islands. Because he is buying, trying to buy stuff from me constantly, and we could try and make Benty survive. And we could possibly keep going until we... I, I think I'd do a lot of the war either in time lapses, because it would just be attacking islands over and over. But I'd have to save up a lot of influence, I think, just to even get the ships ready. We've only got five warships at the moment. Although I imagine if you just take um, Arthur's capital, that'd be pretty much GG for him. So this is something I'll talk about later on in the episode, which is basically like lowering and downgrading a lot of the investor residences. And the reason I'm downgrading them is simply because some of the buildings are just too tall. I have a lot of tier fives because we needed 75 tier fives to achieve uh, certain milestones in order to get the Skyline Tower built. We no longer need that 75 uh, anymore, as far as I'm aware. I wonder actually, do you need it for certain goods? I didn't actually check that, but I, I don't think so to keep them active. I feel like even later on in the episode I checked them and they still were consuming everything. Anyways, I digress. I want to basically reduce them down a bit to maybe tier 3 and then build them up where it makes sense. Up to tier 4 and then tier 5. So the majority I'd like to be just tier 3 size and then the ones around the Skyline Tower themselves are going to be tier 5. I think that should look a little bit nicer. I think, I'm thinking of pushing the bank a little bit further back as well and giving it a bit more space around it. At the moment, it's just hemmed in there right next to the gas fire power plant and the supply station. Or sorry, the supply warehouse. I think it could do with having a bit more space around itself. It's sort of in the shadow of the Skyline Tower. and But ultimately, it has to be sort of central. You know, It has to reach all the way down to the very bottom. So it's kind of a tough one of deciding where to put it. I was thinking like a bank with department stores either side of it could look kind of cool because they're similar sizes. But I ultimately opted for no big main plaza. I decided that the canal was good enough as a big sort of plaza that leads up. And uh, during the episode as well, we'll have a bit of a walk around. We, I don't actually get down on the ground, but we'll zoom in and have a bit more of a closer, tight, close-knit look at the streets on the street level and the canals and the crossings and see how that kind of looks to get some feedback. 
And that's basically going to be it for this. So it's, you know, it's work in progress. We're not done yet. More houses need to be added. Got to move those artisans. Got to figure out if we want more hotels. And then we also have to figure out what kind of sizes the buildings are going to be. And then when Vibrant Cities comes out, you know, things might change even more. Um, but logistically, I think it's... Uh, the, the roads, anyway, are not going to change. And I think the canal I'm quite happy with. As um, I'm happy with the decorations on either side of it, too. So I'm really looking forward to what people think. And whether or not you've got ideas on different things and what you'd like to see. Let me know, and I'll try to get them in there. Alright, ladies and gentlemen, there you have it. The current work in progress for the city as it stands. I'm really happy with how it's coming along. Although, of course, it is pending feedback from you guys. And also, who knows, I might end up coming up with a new idea, changing a few things here and there. And it's obviously not done yet. There's a lot of open gaps that we need to fill in the future. Such as moving the artisans away from the riverbanks here, all the way back over to where the investors used to be. And then we can kind of dot them around the cliff edges, maybe push the hotels further in, maybe add some more hotels, some extra restaurants, cafes, bars, and that kind of thing, as well as the Vibrant Cities DLC, which is coming out in, I don't know, a few weeks or something like that. I'm not actually sure the exact date, but when that comes out, no doubt there'll be some ornaments and things in there we can add to make the artisans look even nicer, maybe even bring workers back to the island as well, depending if we need them or not, because of course I am probably going to add some extra investor households that we haven't actually planned for yet, that we've never had before, more than we've ever had before, which means there'll be more of a demand on our supply chain, which means we'll probably need more base workers and artisans and the like to actually make some of the products. So that's kind of where we stand at the moment. Now, currently, we are on a shortfall for artisans. That's probably because I need to just upgrade these houses here, actually. Let's just do that real quick. Of course, this is like a little temporary area. So that should fix the workforce for now. We'll see how that goes. The other problem that we're suffer suffering from, though, is actually we're sh we have a shortage of citrus. Now, we're getting it delivered, but it's, it's not really maintaining uh, supply as it should be. You know, it's kind of running out, fluctuating a little bit, so we have to kind of get on top of that. Although, globally, I just checked in the statistics screen, it says we are producing enough. So we'll just figure that out logistically, how to get it here. And then another problem is we're not, we don't have enough bread coming in. And bread actually comes in through our Docklands in exchange for 69 champagne, 69 tons of champagne for 300 bread. So I'm going to try and work that out and see what's going on there and try to solve that problem. And then we might have a bit more of a close-in walk around of, this, of the city so far. Again, remember, it is not done yet. Clearly, there are just areas that are blank, blank slates, placeholder. But we can have a walk around and see what's maybe most fitting to add to certain areas. And then just always trying to make sure that we keep all of our various storefronts in operation. Excuse me, I am talking. Uh, but of course, so many things rely on citrus that multiple uh, drug stores, furniture stores, whatever it might be, are going offline all around the same time. So we'll have to kind of fix that. Uh, we do now have town halls in and around a lot of skyscrapers, so it might be worth, I guess, having a look at what recipes we're using in all of these various buildings to see does it make sense what we're actually using and where they are, or do they need to be replaced? Because not all of them are here. We still have multiple shopping arcades in different places around the town that haven't been... I haven't decided yet where they're exactly going to go to be, you know, best used and also not just all clumped and cluttered together too much. Um, it's great to be back, by the way. It's been a couple weeks since I've played, so getting back up to grips with uh, the different trade routes and all everything that's happening. But I feel like the game is running way better than it's ever run for me before, and I can't really remember why that is, but I'm loving it. I just spotted this woman in red all the way there. She's loving it. All right, uh, we're also doing a quest. I haven't done a quest in a really long time, but we have Pleading the Belly from Anne Harlow, the pirate. Anne's old friend Mary managed to fool Bleakworth's officers and escape the death penalty. Anne sent you to break her out of prison before they noticed that her stomach's not getting any rounder. So basically, we have to slip past patrols to Eli Bleakworth's lighthouse and pick up the prisoners, then deliver them back to Anne, no doubt. And this is going to give us a pirate captain's black flag. Now, normally you have black flags. We've had them before, but I don't think I've ever had this one before, which is what piqued my interest, and I thought it'd be fun to do this quest. Um, and it says, basically, it's just like a normal pirate flag where you can go into pirate mode, but it also increases your attack speed. But I just want it, because we haven't had it before. You're damn right. Damn, that's pretty vicious. Okay, so I have told the ships to come here. Uh, they must be in transit still. They're moving from Enbesa. They were previously stationed at Tabarim. Still another minute to go before we can buy back that share. And then once they arrive, we can do that quest. Um, <clears throat> excuse me, but in the meantime, we can sort our... God, I need to take a drink. One sec. <coughs> excuse me. In the meantime, we can sort our citrus problems. 
Uh, now, I'm not sure if I mentioned it during the um, time lapse. I'm just going to mention it now really quickly. The plan is here. The reason why that we're suffering negative influence is because I've actually downgraded a lot of the skyscraper residents to tier 3 or 4. And the reason for that is I kind of want to bring them all down to about tier 3 and then start picking and choosing the ones to build up. With the idea, idea being that at the edges of the town here, we'll slowly but surely start seeing the skyscrapers rise taller and taller as we get to the skyline tower itself and then fall off again as it goes further back out. That's just the idea that I have for the city. It's not going to be a blanket improvement, like step by step, that keeps going bigger and bigger. But like kind of intersperse them amongst the different buildings. So we'll still have some that are small, some that are tall, even as we get further up. But just to make it look like it's gradually getting like into the, you know, the city center, as it were. Again, tough to manage, as I've said many times, when you're trying to put down a members club, hotels, or these department stores. Because they're obviously just going to be gaps in your skyline. So it's kind of tricky to manage all that and make it look good. Um, that's why I'm very much looking forward to seeing what people think. I just noticed this doesn't actually have a bus stop yet. Maybe we should give them one. Uh, let's see. Tourist bus stop. We could pop one somewhere out here. Maybe in the future. Even just there for now, just to give them something. Just get them coverage. But yeah, I'll probably move that. It would make sense maybe to even have it here. I'll have a look at it in future. Alright, so, Citrus. The first thing to do is... I had a quick look around at where so let's i'll take you through my process we have agricultural products all islands we'll scroll down see our global production making 36 tons of citrus per minute we're consuming 34. so when i saw that globally we're making enough i was like okay we'll, we'll have to look through the trade routes essentially trade routes for citrus are simple enough we have in the new world we're picking up citrus on the various islands and then dumping it at our deposit island, Port of Benus. And then that then has a separate route that takes it from the New World to the Old World. Two ships are doing it. Uh, one ship is full at the moment. One has a little bit left over. They seem to always kind of go end up being in sync. We did have them separated before, but there was just big queue times happening at Port of Benus. So they're, I've just kind of let the queues go. So now they, well, unfortunately, sometimes stack up next to each other. It doesn't really make that much sense, but they're still delivering more than just one ship full at a time. Anyways, long story short, delivering it down to Lusk. And then from Lusk, we have our old world routes distributing various goods around to swords, right? So we've got two ships then taking basically a hundred citrus up here. And it's actually dropping some... Oh yeah, we drop it back at Lusk and then they make a separate route. That is a bit messy actually, but it'll be okay for now. For now, for now, for now. But I noticed that on Rush, we have a bread route, which is also something we're short on, where over at Swords, we take bread and we deliver it to Rush. So I'm going to change this now, because it is such a short route between the islands. I'm going to change this so that this one is actually picking up citrus. And then that's being delivered back here. So let's get rid of that. There we go. Something like this. And that should work out, I think. Is there anything wrong with this? Don't think so. So yeah, the idea here is that I noticed that Rush actually produces citrus because we have an item in here the interspecies grafting which produces one citrus every four cycles and we've got multiple things in there making resin okay. and resin has been produced at nearly 200 percent but it's actually interesting while resin is full we don't produce citrus so we kind of have to make sure we're constantly clearing that out too probably i'll think about that in the future so that should get citrus flowing back into the town and sorting that stuff out just fine is simply breathtakingly beautiful. what's your problem Oh, I think they probably ran out of bread again. Yeah, so bread comes in through Docklands. We're exchanging champagne for it. It should be fine, though. So I'm going to look into that in a moment. But I just want to see, have those ships come in yet? They have. They're just coming in now. I told them to go to Madame Kahina's Imperium Exotique. This ship seems to be the fastest. So we'll just send this one on to Eli Bleakworth. And we basically just have to get by there and hit the, hit the lighthouse. I'll just head right forward now. It should be okay. Alright, we'll keep an eye on that. So, bread. Bread has been a little bit of a problem for a while, actually. It seems to I seem to have not worked it out quite correctly. So I'm just going to look at bread on this... Uh, this still hasn't been fixed yet when you're typing. Factory. An explosion. Got to sort that one out. So, uh, yeah, bread is on two separate routes, actually. This is such a mess. <laughs> oh, no. When you step away for like two weeks from the playing the game, you look back at this, it's like, what the hell was I thinking? I almost just don't want to touch that. I'm sure this little bread route is probably working fine. Are we depositing bread at Rush in two different places? That's so messy. Oh my days. 
And then this one is picking bread up from... Okay, so do we make bread anywhere? I guess is the question that I ultimately want to know. Malahide, I think. Is out of control. Okay. So let's just have a look then. If we sort on... There we go. So bread, all the old world islands only. We're consuming 16 tons. And producing three. Here we go, we got the prisoners. Let's just bring them back, and then we're good. Right, so, anyways. Um, old World. You know it would be a nice quality of life if you could just click Old World? Anyway. <laughs> so, it means 13. 13 tons every 20 minutes is what we need to be bringing in in Docklands. So we've got 6 minutes to go, so 13 tons, 20 minutes. What's that? 13 times 20... Yeah, so 260-ish, and I've listed it at 300. So I don't know why we're ever running out, unless the transaction's not going all the way through. It looks like it didn't, actually, yeah. It was 41, and now it's 69. It should always be 69 every time, right? Now we all get a piece. Hmm. I wonder why there was a shortfall. So I guess what I'd have to check is champagne. Is there a problem with champagne? There shouldn't be. No, we do have loads, although it's not producing for some reason. Now it is. So that leads me to believe that Grapes is probably the culprit yet again, which have been the culprit many times before. 26 to 24 in production. So we'll check down in Lusk where we make our champagne. This is where we have all our gold. Holy crap. Um, champagne is here. What's the grape storage situation? 121. It's not that high. Glass? Glass seems fine. Grapes could be an issue. Grapes we make over on this island. That's scaries. Missing one module. Yeah, I don't know. That should be okay then. And let me just check the trade route. Maybe I have sorted it. I guess we'll find out if we seem to run out of grapes anytime soon. So this ship is picking up grapes at Scaries. Dropping them to Swords, the main island. Picking them back up from Swords, because there I is some grapes there. The art of others. And then dropping it back to Lusk. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, this seems fine. It is a bit long-winded, but it does seem like it's doing the right thing. Although I wonder... Yeah, no, this is okay. Because the ship's not going to fill up just with scaries. It's not going to pick up 300. It's actually about to reach there now. It should pick up about 150, right? And then go up and pick up, like, another 150 from up there, and then dr drop it off. And that seems to be what it's doing. I wonder, would it be better to pick up here, drop back at Lusk, then go up pick up and then drop back at Lusk. So it's just making two separate trips, but it's dropping stuff into Lusk more frequently. And that way you could pick up a full 300. But I don't know if that really makes a difference. Because now it's going to go on to Swords and pick up the remaining to get to 300. But it just means Swords is building up some all the time. That's the kind of issue there, isn't it? Yeah, I think so. I'll try it a different way just to see. So we're going to add in Lusk a second time. So pick up at Scaries, then drop to Lusk. Pick up at Swords. And then drop to Lusk again. And that's it. Let's just see if that makes any difference at all. Alright, cool. Um, so we got that item. Boom, there it is. A pirate Captain's Black Flag. Attack speed 20%. Oh, you know, it'd be nice if we could put it on our ship of the line. We'd have to get rid of one of these. Ocean plotting sheet of the southern hemisphere. Movement speed, 35%. Damage per shot and attack speed. I'd say get rid of the uh, the steel double hull. So let's meet up with that ship. And that way we've got like a real pirate fleet. And then our special ship, the Caesar, our royal ship of the line is going to have that special black flag. That's just kind of neat. All right, so I think that sort of solves all the um, all the issues. I think so. Uh, let's just finish the upgrades here. Whoops, sorry, I didn't mean to hit that. I hit spacebar by accident. And there we go. We're artisaned out of our minds. Now, is there any farmer households available for us here? 
just down here, I think, right? I'll yeah, have to leave them as is. All right, well, it looks like we're expanding even further. There's one right there, actually. Cool. So yeah, so the plan is basically to get even more skyscrapers on the go. Now, I've got a bit of a problem, which is that this power plant is only reaching power to there because I've cut. So people actually brought this up in the last episode with our Docklands. Unfortunately, we don't get much attractiveness from the Docklands because there's only like six modules attached to it, which gives us 240. So obviously if we'd attached everything, we'd get something like a thousand attractiveness, which would be crazy, which would be great. And we'd be well back up and over 9,000. 9,000 attractiveness is what gives us the palace's extra, almost like prestige levels, right? But because I'm going with beauty over efficiency, it means that we don't have that prestige level anymore. And the more prestige level you get, I think, if I remember correctly, the increased area of influence for all public buildings. So that includes, I think, I want to say that includes electricity. I think so. And it gives the extra range. It'll only give you like two extra tiles of range, but it would mean that, you know, if we hit that prestige level one or two times, we'd end up getting these houses covered as well. So unfortunately, these investors don't have power. And they're off down in the corner, which is why I was thinking like, oh yeah, in the corners, maybe we can have like museums and that's going to raise attractiveness as well, actually. Uh, so even just now, we could just pop this down. So this is a museum. We don't have the influence to put any more down, but for a zoo, we would. Am I losing my mind though? Why don't we have a zoo down here? I feel like there's supposed to be a zoo. So I'm just going to shift this up here. Just pick a zoo really quickly. It does say 10 costs, but it shouldn't be. I think because I'm in the negative, I can't even do it at all. Because it thinks you can't... It's going to give me 10 influence and then give back 10 influence. Because we have the um, palace module thing for zoos. The cultural act, this thing. So influence per module is 10, but you have to put it down first. And you can't put it down first if it costs 10. <laughs> That's kind of an interesting little mini problem there. Uh, okay, well, at the very least, we could just upgrade some skyscrapers again, I guess. So that gives you back a little bit of influence each time. So I think it's a tier... Yeah, so tier... Oh, it's only tier 4 that gives you it. Yeah, so we only need to go to tier 4. So which ones are tier 3? This is 3. These can all go up then. There we go, we've evened out our influence, but we need 10. I'm not running any propaganda or anything, so I just have to smack them up that way. Oh, they're tier 5. See, they don't actually need to be increased, tier 5s. It's just tier 3s. These are all the tier 3s. Okay. There we go, we're one influence away. And there we go. So that should mean, boom. And now it's, it's free. It doesn't cost us anything, but it allows us to put them down at least. So just as a, almost like a test, I just want to see if we raise that attractiveness to 9,000. I don't know if we can even do that. And let's just stick some legendary animals in there and see what we get. can't even remember what some of these things do. And you, of course, remember we had all this in there before. So what's the attractiveness now? 8-7. So I might just actually complete the snowflakes just to see what we get. Alright. White tiger. We have an albino alligator. There we go. So attractiveness 20%. So there you go. That's going to be big. Now, is that just on the zoo, or is it attractiveness 20% everywhere? Affect zoological gardens. Does it also affect this one? It does. That's, the That's good. Place. So we get 20% more attractiveness out of this place. So we're already, we're only uh, 230 away. So let's just tighten this up a bit then. All right.
Don't know why that got deleted if it didn't overwrite anything, but okay. Why can't I do that? What's happened? What's wrong? Gone negative influence. Did I do something wrong? This is still connected. Don't know what I've done wrong, guys. Sorry. Just gonna delete this. It's probably really painful to watch. Okay. So that's free. Yeah, this should all be free. I don't know what I did wrong. I don't know. You can let me know. You gained an influence bonus. Attractiveness 20%. Oh, yeah. I totally forgot about that. So if we went all the way up to... Yeah, so the more zoom modules we put down, we get another boot, another 15% attractiveness globally. So that'd be pretty damn good. All right, um, but that does require a lot of modules. I guess you could just build another zoo out here and just keep doing it. I might have to do that. All right, uh, so let's just, yeah, let's just pop all these animals back down. Let's go with the snowflake category again. Sorry about this. Um, we can check on some of our other projects too. One, two, three, four, five. Well, let's go with then something that's smaller, so let's go with, I don't know, extinct species. That's going to give us attractiveness 10% and then inspiration the riders. Cool. It's just temporary, I'm just doing this to test some stuff out. So we're over the 9,000 attractiveness now. So I just want to see, does our range increase then for electricity buildings? 12 area of influence, so it has worked, the prestige has kicked into effect, and then it's every 1,000 attractiveness after that. So that means that, let's have a look now. Okay. So is that better than before? So just as a, to remember, I'm going to cut the road here. So we know that the electricity stopped on that spot, yeah? So I'm just going to get rid of some of these animals now and just see. Right, we've fallen below. We'll click the thing again. Oh yeah, so it is working. I was just... I know we've probably answered this in, in the past. I think with Crown Farms, I was asking there before. But it's great to see. So if we could just get, like, oh, just a little bit more prestige. We can definitely bring this, this electricity line all the way to the very edge, right? So that we can cover this place. That's all I want to do. <laughs> um, I don't really plan on building that much because we, we have electricity all here so if I wanted more skyscrapers here or at the back or up here that's going to be fine uh, and the same kind of goes for down here if we wanted more on this side that could also work out too so yeah we could definitely raise this up even further um, so just as a temporary measure we'll just because this is this area is going to be gone I, I plan on having multiple zoos around the place with their own specialized you know their own little categories uh, so just again temporarily pop this down this way So it's 3, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So that's two more categories that we can fill out. Uh, let's see. Rainforest. Actually, I feel like the DLC ones give you those sort of global things. Arctic Tundra. Let's try them. That's going to give us attractiveness plus 100 for public moorings and increased visits. Nice. Let's try the, another, the Great Desert. Let's try that one. Oh. Do we not have this category completed? The only uh, zoological items I have completed right now are all of these ones. So the animals in here would be ocean predators, the Great Coral Reef, and the Abyssal Depths. All our ocean going, our aquarium, basically. And we don't have a zoo anywhere else. We've got the botanical garden, of course. Wow, I thought I had every single item, but I guess maybe I don't. Don't think I've used them down here, right? This city is a magnet for genius. Nope, Great Desert's empty. Nice, okay, cool. I didn't realize there's some that we haven't done. Let's just queue them up at the uh, Research Institute. Some very promising ideas floating around today. 
So we have the scorpion. We don't have a fennec and a dromedary. Dromedary? Now, I'll just quickly look them up in case we do have them in storage somewhere. We could just pull them over. Uh, yeah, so we've got a fennec. So where are you? You're at Tab Tabarim. Oh, no. It's pretty far away. Our flagship can go fetch. So that's good. We only need to get one then. Is that it? That's it. Swords. All right, cool. Alrighty, so that's on the way. Uh, we can cancel the second one out of here then. Just say, don't need that. I will just see what that gives us. But anyway, uh, so it's gonna, I'll save three spots for them. So we have the scorpion. We'll save that spot, save that spot, and then fill out the next six. So let's see. Embesson Highlands. Let's try that. Wow, we actually don't have all of that either. God damn, I thought I got everything. That's good to know, though. I'll make a note of it. I'd like to get all the items. Prod Savannah. There we go. It's like it opens up in a different location every time. It's like, okay, cool. Number of modules are reduced How for pretty. cattle farms and An alpaca. Personage has arrived. Frank von Lundstein, warmest of hosts. So yeah, the other thing that actually we could do to boost attractiveness is also pop in some items that can give you attractiveness based on investors and things. Uh, if we really wanted to. So this one, residences with the bank need fulfilled are provided with pocket watches and jewelry. They're provided with cigars, that's obviously really good. And then reduced consumption of chocolate. Let's just say I take that away for a moment. And attractiveness, then we can have a look at this one. Investor in Obrero, attractiveness plus two. So we're currently on 9493. That's 9579. Not really worth it, I don't think, just for like 100. But just good to have a little quick look at. All right, anyways, uh, yeah, so as we build up more of these skyscrapers, though, obviously what's going to be a nice added benefit of that is that we'll get more uh, influence. And then more influence, more town halls, more stuff like that. So we have room for a town hall somewhere over here if we wanted to, although... I think I am going to leave this area roughly as like a sort of a zoo and then maybe it's just some skyscrapers along the sides. Up here there's a town hall with nothing in it. Oh, actually he's in there already. Yeah, so I'll have to think about where it's, what's going to happen there and then there's room for another one further up here if we wanted. So yeah, that's kind of the situation. Alright, so uh, what else could we be checking? So citrus and bread, it doesn't look like we've run out since time has been passing, so it looks like that's solved. I thought it was going to be a bit of a bigger problem, but it looks totally fine. Let's just check the Docklands and make sure it's done its trades. Yeah, it did the last trade okay. And Citrus... Oh, actually, I saved that. Workers are collapsing. Why is that? Bread. Yeah, so it is, it is a bread problem. It's such a s strange and yet simple problem seemingly to have. I think it might be because there is a reserve in the island, and that's preventing this ship from taking any. Is that what's happening? Yeah, because they just pulled up to take some bread, but they didn't take any, even though there is 300 on the island. So that does seem to be the issue. Okay. But that should sort itself out, though. It should fix itself over time. As long as this stays steady, and this keeps coming in, that will be fine. So we'll just have to take the hit momentarily, I guess. Um, yeah, what else could you do? You could just buy some, I suppose, or something. Is there any bread down here? <laughs> no. I guess if you brought in more than you need the first, like, one, uh, as a one-off, it might be okay. Twelve minutes to go, though. Well, we've got room to bring it in with something else, so let's just do that. Now if we just bring it in as, like, a one-off, that should sort it out for quite a while. Alright, that'll fix that problem. Um, we also had this to be redeemed. Let's see what we got. World's Fair Annex. Marine Promenade. Let's do that. Cool. Alright, so, uh, anyways, let's give these an upgrade then. Uh, 
So I like the idea that down here, somewhere down here, this is like where the thing opens up. I'm not a huge fan of this area though, but unfortunately, like, what can you do, you know? How can you blend Keyside into City? It's not that easy. And I don't mind having, like, beach and stuff. It looks nice enough, I think. Um, it looks, like, natural enough, but it doesn't look that natural when you've just got something like a harsh line like this. I could change this so that it's actually the garden variant. So I'll show you what I mean. Get some rest. Is this the one I'm thinking of? I thought it was in here, but this is actually still white. Yeah, there should be a garden variant of that. Sorry, maybe it's an engineer's in here. Yes. There we go. So it's got grass. That's what I mean. Sorry, a grass variant. So that it would blend a lot nicer on this side, but it doesn't maybe blend as nice on that side. Let's just see what it looks like. So that's the kind of thing you'd have. Something like that. You could even extend this all the way out, so it just goes right out to the edge like that. So let's have a little walk and just see really closely, Is this does this look okay? Not really, you know? I preferred it when it was white, just because that way it kind of seemed... It's a shame you can't have both, right? White on one side and, and green on the other. That'd be perfect. <laughs> oh well. And there's really not much I can do about this. We can only flatten so much grass. Like here, I've flattened it, and it kind of I've kind of like dotted some trees further out, so it sort of like looks like it blends in. So I'm pretty happy with that. And we can maybe have a fountain or a statue or something out there as well in the future. All right. Well, anyway, <clears throat> so as we lead into the city, we have our public restrooms that people can go to down there. We feed in, looking good. And then we open up into the canals and the shopping districts over straight away on the left. Now, this part of the canal is not really done. This may be a bit temporary, I don't know. I have this area looking like we just have dots of trees, different lamps and stuff. I might let time actually pass by. Maybe we'll just skip ahead just a little bit. Alright, so the canals lead up and up and up. We've got benches, things for people to sit on, multiple crossings, pedestrian crossings, but then also the regular crossings for, you know, carts and things to get by. People are in the canals swimming around, loving life. It's cool. We have then the spotlights looking up on the Skyline Tower. So at night time, that's going to look pretty good. Keeping the place lit. That's not bad. And that's kind of what we've got so far. So... See, we have a little shopping district here. So I thought it would be cool to have these like two plazas like this. We have the town hall then facing off just opposite it. Um, we might have maybe market stalls or the pavilions or something out here instead. Maybe they'd look better. But I thought it was kind of cool having the two entrances that go down. And you could imagine like you go down, you turn, you head that way or something, you know. Uh, we've got three of the department stores. I thought it was cool to keep the same ones together. Sometimes uniformity can actually look quite nice. Where you've got, it's like a, a big mall, right? And then there's like stalls and stuff outside with some bushes and stuff at their backs. Looking quite good there, I think. We have our drugstore and then a furniture store here. Hotels have their little pavilion and a place out and then they've got also a little shopping district on this side. So anyway, long story short, I want these to be the first tier, tier one skyscrapers. Then we're going up and we're seeing some that are tier two. Let's downgrade this one maybe. That's tier two as well. Eh, you can downgrade that one. Maybe upgrade this one. Something like that. And then we've got some tier threes popping out, which is nice to see. Oops, wrong thing. So there we go. I think that looks pretty cool. And then we have the one on the side, which maybe looks a bit out of the ordinary. Although maybe not if we do it this one as well. We have to wait till it grows a bit further. So that's looking kind of nice. This like it just it's steadily growing up and up and up. And then we'll have to kind of do the same thing. So this will take a very long time. I won't bore you to death with doing that all on camera. But uh, that's what I'm going to be doing in between episodes. I'll probably just like reconfigure how these look and wait for them to grow and like level up where we can. Uh, now I've noticed my artisans are falling again. Is it bread related? It must be right because they take bread too. Yeah, yeah. All right, we'll just give it a little bit of time. Next Docklands that arrives, that should be sorted and that should be fixed. All right, we've got 22 influence. We can have another um, 
Town Hall if we wanted to as well, which is good. Damn, I'm trying to think. I had something else to do, but I can't really remember it. Oh, yeah, I don't know why it does that. It juts me all the way out this way. Oh, we've got some runes also as well. So we got that item. So let's um just pop them down. The Great Desert. And the Fennec should be here as well, right? Yep. Alright, we can take a look at what that's given us. Extinguish speed, range, and mobilize requirement for fire stations. Actually, you know what? I don't have any fire stations here at all, now thinking about it. It might be good to have one next to one of these department stores, because they're a similar size. No, they're not a similar size at all, are they? <laughs> but yeah, it'll have to be. I mean, actually, down by the docks makes a lot of sense, and near the end of the canals. So somewhere around here would be kind of cool. This, this one fire station's job to look after the entire city. Um, okay, so, yeah, I, I guess we'll just start moving some of these houses out now. Or I don't know if I should do that in between episodes. Again, it just feels like anything building is just going to be tedious to watch. But we solved all the logistical problems. Now it's really just about putting down more and more investor houses and then coping with their demands. But at the moment, as it stands, we have everything that they need. Oh, I say that. Coffee seems to be a bit of a problem. Let's just check really quickly coffee consumption globally. Oh, yeah, I remember what I wanted to do. God, I'm after remembering that towards the end of the episode. So coffee's actually okay. What I want to do is <clears throat> check the placement of these things and just make sure that the ones that we have here make the most sense uh, in terms of the items that they're making. So the, the four that we not are currently really using properly, this is reducing telephones. So that's actually really good for all these scholars that are being affected by it. To the drug store. Again, it might make sense maybe to push these up to here somewhere. Maybe so shopping, but I don't really know if it makes sense to have a hospital next to like the shopping centers, but I'll have to see about that. I've got another hospital here for some reason. Okay, then we've got these. This reduces tailored suits. So yeah, so I think actually what would be cool is getting rid of some of the engineers here and here because they're the same size and popping in like the things that's going to affect the scholars more there. So that that's actually pretty cool. We might do that. Gramophones and steam carriages. So this could definitely be used over there. And this is light bulbs and glasses. Now, these guys use glasses too, don't they? No, but they do use gramophones. Gramophones and steam carriages. So it looks like the detergent <laughs> could be used out here somewhere as well. So maybe we'll just pull that over now. Help with the reduction of things. And then I have to decide where it's going to go. But it seems like everything else. So let's have a look at what we've got. We have vacuum cleaners reducing steam carriages and glasses. We have the briefcase. So that's cigars and leather boots. So that could maybe go back out to the other guys. Gramophones and cigars. We've got sewing machines and pocket watches. Wow, is there nothing that does coffee? I thought there was. I guess it wouldn't be in the stores. Probably in one of the restaurants, actually, thinking about it. So let's check. What do we have? Chocolate schnapps and sausages. Chocolate schnapps and champagne. So do we have anything that's going to reduce coffee? This one reduces coffee by 10% glog. It would require us bringing in whale oil, which we actually kind of have. So what's our current recipe here? We're reducing chocolate, champagne... Hmm... All right, let's check the restaurant then. It might actually go with two bars in that case. So coffee negative 5%. It's not really enough. Yeah, I'm going to get rid of this and we're going to change it to be a bar. And we're going to serve glog <laughs> if we can. Must fetch Which if I recall correctly, we actually are already serving over here. Mm-hmm. So that is happening already. A bit more of a demand on grapes now. And I guess cinnamon. But that'd be huge. I mean, that's a huge coffee reduction. 10%. Like, all of these guys, like, the amount of coffee that investors are going to be consuming, it's going to be reduced heavily. We have to just wait until it's powered on. Once it gets its first batch of goods, we'll just speed up time, and then we'll see. So coffee consumption right now is 44. So it's 44 on this island. 
So I'm very curious to see what we end up getting. So we just have to wait for this to be delivered. And there we go. The buff is active. That's only 10%, so, you know, should go down to 40, I guess. Yeah, so we actually do save quite a bit. Only barely, though. Not everything producing coffee is operating. I'll have to look into why that is. But if we have a look at just swords, it went from 44 down to just 41. Cool. Now let's check where we have ruins. Uh-oh. Oh, no. They're out of wood. They're jibbling. Okay. Nope. Now, the interesting thing is, ah, uh, that's why I was going to say, uh, it's rum. I was going to say, are we making coffee out here? The fire has been vanquished. God, my mind is so scatterbrained. I'm trying to remember, like, old world coffee. It's over here. Okay. Wow, we've a thousand on the island. It seems like why not get more here? We have one more available to us. Could slam it in there, it just wouldn't get the uh, town hall benefit. Affects coffee roasters, productivity 50%. Hmm, there is more coffee specialization to be done here then, I guess. A lot of little problems popping up, but again, I don't really want to focus on fixing them too much because I know that I'm going to grow the city, so the problems are just going to happen again. Kind of sick of that music, to be honest. <laughs> Is our thing here yet? On course. And the other thing is, I think I'm going to need even more gas because I'm after putting down an extra gas power plant. So there's lots of little mini problems opening up. Oh, by the way, I'm sure people, some people have messaged me. I forgot. I know it's quite late into the episode to be talking about it, but um, people have asked me, oh, what do you think of the DLC? Like, the, they're doing a season four. And I got to be honest, I'm, I'm not really that interested in it. It's based on the new world, which is nice. I guess... It's not that I'm, like, adverse to them making any more content. I just thought that Season 3 wasn't as good as Season 1 and 2. And me personally, like, I just was not a fan of, and I still am not a fan of, these reskinned buildings. You know, I, I just don't think they look that good. It's not just about the aesthetic of things. I liked tourism, right? The first thing that came in Season 3. Tourism was really cool. Having hotels, bus routes, connecting the city together that way, that was awesome. I, I thought that was really clever. And then you've got your restaurants, right? And it's like, oh, you supply restaurants, so customers fill the restaurants and they make things and you have a recipe book to determine what they do. And it's like, okay, well, there was a little bit of reskinning. It's like the restaurants look the same, whether it's a cafe, bar, or restaurant, they kind of are the same building. And I was like, ah, that's a bit of a shame, but whatever, it's not that bad, it's fine. So that was, that was fine, tourism was, was that. Then they came along with um, God, I'm actually totally blanking what was next. What the hell was next? I know that High Life was in there. What? How can I not remember what the third piece of content was? I actually completely cannot remember. I'm actually going to tab out and find this out because I just don't remember. And I actually reviewed it. That's my browser booting up. Just give me a sec. <laughs> I'm going to keep this in. And look this up. I'm gonna feel like such an idiot as soon as I see it. Did I not cover it? I actually can't even find it even now. What the hell's going on? Uh, let's see. Oh my god, it's Docklands. Yeah, Docklands. Sorry, sorry. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I'm staring over Docklands. I thought that was season two for some reason. Right, Docklands, then tourism. Yeah, so, okay, right. So Docklands... I was a bit iffy on Docklands at first, but I've warmed up to it. I, I think it does fit the, the season well. On its own, it's not really that necessary, but it definitely fits the season quite well. Uh, for when you need to get, like, extraordinary amounts of goods. So I can see that. Docklands is cool. Tourism was cool. But I gotta be honest, I'm just a bit down on the high life, just because... I really wasn't like a fan of the multi-factory thing and then they just did the whole like recipe book thing again for the same buildings that give you buffs so it's it's the same thing as tourism so not to be like a downer or whatever I'm just like ah oh, man you know like 
The game is like really, really good. I love Anno 1800. I think it's awesome. Such a phenomenal game. One of the best games I've played in a very, very long time. And I'm just an advocate of being like, it's, you know, it's kind of done now, like move on. I, I'd rather they say like, we're working on the next Anno game. And I'm sure they are, but I kind of wish we had that announcement instead. And to say that they're making a DLC for the new world, I'm just like, ah, I don't know, like, it's hard to get excited for me. I'm just being honest, you know, it's just hard to get excited. But I, I hope it's great. I hope they do something really clever with it and they prove me wrong. And it's like, yeah, this was a great worthwhile addition to the game. And I hope that's what it ends up being, you know, to be optimistic. But I, I just have this feeling where I'm like, Anno's pretty bloated right now, Anno 1800. And unless you're going to add a new session, I find it hard to, like, get excited to pile more stuff on top of what we've got already. And it's nothing to do with space or anything like that. It's, it's more just like with the mechanics we have already. Like, do we need a third tier residence in the new world? Is that really going to be like something that the game really needs? Or is it going to be, you know? So I guess we'll just have to see, uh, you know, it's they'll have to prove me wrong on my skepticism about doing more content on, on already existing stuff in the game. Uh, and I know that they've said that they're not planning on doing another session that, you know, technically it's quite a complicated thing to do. And I think it's extremely impressive that they have one, two, three, four and now five all running in tandem together it's such a shame i always say it. it's such a shame to me that they ever did sunken treasures i like the crafting thing with old nate and being able to make stuff and the diving bell that's cool but man oh man i don't think we needed a second old world session like i know people love crown falls as a big giant island or whatever but i just don't feel like I feel like this running in tandem with everything else was a waste if it's not like a new biome. It would have been so cool to have it be out here and it's like, oh, it's the it's the Far East uh, or something like that. That would have been really cool. And you've got like lore in the game to back that up with Princess Ching and she, there's all this stuff that comes up with the Emperor and it'd be kind of cool. But oh well. Anyway, long story short, I'm not hyped for it. That's just my honest answer. I'm not, I don't get excited for much, to be honest. I think I'm partially maybe dead inside. I, I'm, I don't even say that jokingly. I really don't get excited for anything. So there is that. I saw people like reacting to the number four on Twitch, like losing their minds and everything. And I was like, okay. Like I saw it and I was just like, oh, okay. <laughs> like Why? I have no emotional, emotional resonance with that stuff. Um, Cause there was nothing to show. If they maybe showed some stuff then maybe, but. All there was was a blog to say, hey, we're doing New World again. So it's like, okay. Anyway, look forward to seeing what it's going to be. I'm almost more excited for the Vibrant Cities pack, which I guess shows you where my priorities lie. Uh, but I guess we'll see. So there you go. People were asking, so those are my thoughts on it. So kind of scatterbrained, but basically I feel nothing. And uh, it, they, you know, they have to prove to me that it's going to be good, basically. But prove to me that it was worth doing. Uh, but my heart lies in the future. I'm very much just hoping for a Roman or an ancient Greek Anno game that will just be the best thing. I don't want to say that because I've had my heart broken with so many games before <laughs> that I don't, I, I get afraid of getting excited for anything. Um, but I just can't imagine if you just made 1800 but reskinned it to be Roman, oh my days. It'd be like the perfect game for me. All right, anyway, that's going to be uh, the end of the episode. I'm not really, see, see, this is why I haven't really been uploading too much because I'm not too sure in terms of gameplay-wise what to be doing. Although we do have a few goals laid out in front of us now in terms of filling out the rest of the city, moving the artisan buildings over here, and kind of, yeah, basically finishing it off. And then I guess with the DLCs that are going to come out, I'll revisit the new world and we'll continue on, depending on what the content is. And that'll probably be it for the series. Um, but at the moment, yeah, once per week on Sunday. Sorry that I've missed a couple of weeks in a row. It's just because this took me, you wouldn't believe, a really, really long time to figure out, like, a layout. The amount of layouts I tried that I couldn't, that I ended up scrapping is uh, honestly kind of embarrassing. So <laughs> we won't go into it. But anyway, that's going to be it for this episode. Thank you guys very much for watching. Thanks for all the support. That billionaire episode is, like, over 25,000 views, which is unbelievable for a Let's Play episode. And it doesn't feature any new content or DLC or anything. It's just me playing the game. Um, so it's kind of incredible, like the support is really insane for the series and that always makes me feel real bad when I'm like, look, I just don't want to run it into the ground for no reason. I'd rather do episodes when I've got cool stuff to show and cool stuff to do. Alright, like I said, that's it. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.
Hey guys, thank you very much for watching, and remember, if you want to support this series directly, you can click the Join button to become a channel member. Doing so will get your name in the credits, as well as loyalty badges and emotes to use in the comments. If you don't see the Join button, it means the video has been copyright claimed, but you can still join from the channel page on desktop. You can also link your account to our Discord to get a special role on there that will give you access to the Senate House and a few other perks.